Welcome to the Rock Live podcast. This is our sermon rewind where we are delving back into the previous message. We are in a Your World series, and in that Your World series, we're in our mini series about finances. The reason why I love this is because we are talking all things finances from the Bible's perspective, from what God has to say. Did you know God cares about our finances? He cares about our money. And uh, this week we talked about stewardship. I'm here with Pastor Dan. Hey, everybody. Uh, and my name is Antonio, by the way, here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. And we are going to be talking, uh, rewinding the sermon yeah. that we talked about stewardship. Uh, speaking of stewardship, Pastor Dan, you talked about, uh, I was curious how you're feeling. How I'm feeling? Why? The reason why I asked that is because you mentioned that you started running, right? We've always heard about your walks, right? Yeah. We talk about your yeah. you know, walks are notorious. So yesterday uh, I was going to go on a walk, but for some reason just, I don't know if I was just anxious or what, but yeah. uh, I felt like I need to run. Yeah. And I knew, um, you know, I had a goal it's in my, I want to run one mile. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and, and so I have a route that I usually take around my neighborhood, but I, I knew with some of the hills and things like that, if I ran that route, I wouldn't make it a mile. Yeah. Um, that because uh, there's some hills and stuff like that that I just know going up it I'm gonna I'm gonna run out of steam. Yeah. And so um, I I chose a different route and I I ran probably 1.4 miles. That's good. Because uh, I routed it on my phone before I went and was able to. It was all downhill. So I told someone that and they're like, "How are your knees? You know, because yeah. the, oh, the yeah. impact going downhill." Yeah. But um, but I'm good. You know, yeah. I'm a little sore in my quads. Yeah. The but, day after a run, especially the first run, if you're not having ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So quadriceps are definitely. I was coming down the stairs. I was we, our bedrooms upstairs, so I'm coming down the stairs <laughs> like, oh, you know, doing that. But trying to drink water, take protein, all that oh, good there you stuff. Go. Did you you know, stretch so. afterwards, get a good stretch. Yeah, good, good stretch, and uh, this morning stretched again. You know, yeah. so feeling it, but it's all good, man. I I don't know if I'll do that same downhill that run, run again. Well, maybe you add a hill. One way to avoid some soreness is. Like what I do, just don't run. That's good. Well, yeah. That, that <laughs> no, does help, I, right? I keep telling myself I want to start running again. Maybe I'll start with a walk. You, start like, with you walk. like the walk. Love the walks, man. It clears my mind, and uh, definitely I love a view. Yeah. You know, and so um, that's, you know, some yeah. of the hills, you get these nice views. There's uh, this lady in our neighborhood. You, you can see her every morning. She's on a walk, but she walks around with a bat. With a bat. I mean, don't mess with this lady. So Dang. it's like, a, you know, she does this number. Yep. Uh, for those not watching, she's pumping with her arms, but she has a bat in one hand, and I wouldn't come across her. You know. So there's a guy in my neighborhood that has the golf club. Oh yep, I've seen those before. And uh, yeah, there's another guy that walks with a fan, but he's he's fan of oh, himself. Okay. You okay. know. So, um, but yeah, the golf club man, I I was like, I'm not messing with him. No, for sure, they stay protected. There used to be a band, a Christian band called Five Iron Frenzy, and I, I, I always think oh, of that. Oh, from the fi okay, yeah, Five, Five Iron, Iron Frenzy. I'm catching. Yeah. I was yeah. a little slow there. Well. Again, we're, that's what, the, the way over was you're taking care of your body. Yeah. You're being yeah. a steward. Stewardship. Yeah, stewarding your health. Not steward. Yeah, not steward. Stewart needs to steward his... Is it, I, I think, it, is it Little? What's his, is it? Stuart Little? Yeah, Stuart Little. I was yeah, like, Little Mouse. Character? Yeah, yeah, Stuart Yeah, we're Little. not being stewards. We're being stewards. All right. Well, we had a great message. I like the points that they all, they all rhymed. Need, greed, need, and seed. Need, greed, and seed. Yeah, yeah. We, we have to identify our need, deal with greed... And pass that test, and then view the rest as seed. I love that. It, so that's a, there's assuming leftover, but I feel like you gave us some practical to assure that there is leftover. Yeah, and I I believe that's the will of God because he he promises grace, which yeah. is God's sovereign divine ability to get the job done on our behalf when we can't do it right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and sometimes people look at finances and they get overwhelmed because they say, I can't do this. I'm not a finance guy. I'm not a, a very smart person. I'm not a numbers right. person. I'm not uh, mathematically inclined. That mm -hmm. was my worst subject in school. Right. And now finances have numbers attached to them in addition and subtraction. And uh, and people get overwhelmed. Yeah. And, and especially when prices are going up and pressure's on and bills are rising and, and needs are plenty. You know, right. um, if you have a family, man, those kids grow like weeds. And they eat like crazy, yeah. you know. And uh, and I've got two teenage boys right now in the house, and they eat everything. I mean, yeah. you know, the Bible talks about the consuming locust and the chewing yeah. locust and the gnawing locust. And I mean, yeah. that's that's my two boys, right? Right. You know, if there's fruit on the counter, if there's <laughs> chips in the cabinet, I mean, they just threw it all. I'm like, didn't we just buy? <laughs> <laughs> the Costco, you know, big bag of tortilla chips. Yeah. And I'll see one of my kids just, you know, <laughs> hand in the bag, sitting on the couch. I'm like, are you going to eat dinner? And they're like, yeah, I'll eat dinner too. This is just a snack. Like, 
But it's like, come on. And yeah. that's a little one. You know, right, it's like right. he's over there eating the yeah. big bag of chips. That's a little. The little yeah, one's not no, so little. he's getting big. Yeah. Yeah. He might be taller than you. He probably. I, it, I always. So <laughs> Micah the other day, I told him, I was like, don't do that again, man. He, I gave him, I, I went to give him a hug and he bent over. <laughs> to, like, how's it going down there, little one? And I was like, oh man, I like, never felt so little. I, I kind of did this number, look yeah. up and he bent over, bent down. Did to you give say me thanks, a- dad, when you <laughs> finished how's the hug? Up there? How's the weather up there? <laughs> yeah, right. right? <laughs> Gosh, man. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I, my, my son and my nephews and probably my youngest when he gets that big, it, I'm surrounded by the, the giants. Yeah. yeah. No, you know what I mean? Real. Of the old Testament. It's crazy. Especially my nephews, man. It's, I feel like a little toddler right. giving some of them a hug. Yeah. No, it, it's it's all right. All right. It, you know, you feel like a little pat on the head and yeah. <laughs> love you, man. Thanks, little guy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, yeah, you, you, they, they devour, they eat, they're yeah. growing. Yeah. And, which and that costs needs, money. Needs, yeah. 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 It costs money. So, yeah, I mean, we all we all have to. I, we, I mean, we all know we have needs. Mm-hmm. Um, we all, uh, we laid out some of those practically in the message and especially when we put the image of the budget up yeah. and I would encourage anybody who hasn't listened to the message, um, when you listen, if you can watch at yeah. least that section right. and get that, that oh, screenshot, yes. that image, yeah. Yeah. uh, of a simple budget. Um, maybe we can attach it to the show notes yeah, here Yeah, that'd be cool. or to, uh, the link below where we can have that graphic as well. We'll try and do yeah. that. Yeah. That so. might be something Ethan, do you think maybe we can make that happen? I broke the fourth wall. You did. There is a person there's, in here. There's another man in the room named Name is Ethan. Ethan. So maybe we can get that graphic and put it up there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Maybe we can we can either put it up in post or post a link or yeah. just go to the the sermon and find it and watch it and take a screenshot or something like that. Um, but another practical tip: uh, in August, we have the Be Money Smart class coming up with yeah. Reverend uh, Dennis and Reverend Barbara. Um, just awesome people in our church, Barbara. And Dennis, before they were on staff at The Rock, both at one time were homeless. Uh-huh. And their testimony is, is that they got a hold of God, got a hold of his stewardship principles, and uh, just were able to prosper and be yeah. blessed, um, bought homes together, kept those homes, rented them out, bought yeah. new homes, and just held on to the goods that God gave them in their life, properly stewarded everything, and they've got a great house, a uh, beautiful family, God has done some tremendous things in their life. Dennis yeah. actually wrote a book about all the miracles God did in his wow. life. It's yeah. it's actually a fun read. That's cool. I, um, I should check that out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So um, we'll probably try and get that in our bookstore, yeah, too. Yeah, that'd be cool. But, um, but yeah, so uh, in August, they're going to teach the Be Money Smart class, and they talk about the tithe. They talk about mm. stewardship. And then on the practical level, if this is something that you're dealing with, you can ask questions like, hey, here's my budget. Mm-hmm. You know, what what do you see? What, yeah. what should I consider? And what would be a good you know, goal for this or that, or, or how do I deal with this yeah. lack or this need? And, um, like, like I said, they, they started at homeless, so yep. they know what it's like yep. to, to, I mean, it's like the apostle Paul. I know what it, it is right. to lack. I'm like, I know what it yep. is to abound, you know, they, they've been in that situation and can share those practical tips. And then one-on-one can actually look at your numbers. Yeah. And Barbara was the they finance the manager here before Adam, you know, I know I'm always calling Adam out in the services <laughs> now. Um, he's absolutely wonderful, but uh, Barbara was the finance manager with Pastor Jim, and then into my pastorate. Yeah, before we brought Adam on, and Barbara's a woman of faith, mm-hmm. uh, knows all the numbers of the church, and um, just has been able to manage that properly. So you're in good hands with them, right? You no, know? and I love how they 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 love that, and they love to help people yeah. go through those things. I know there's a lot of materials out there, a lot of gurus that will talk about finances. But what I love about Be Money Smart is it's always from a biblical perspective. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so stewardship is a huge part of that aspect. And, and really from the message, I, I, I think one of my big takeaways was right off the bat, Pastor Dan, obviously we were coming up from last week talking about the tithe. Yes. And we know God owns all the donuts. It's all God's. Yeah. And we talk about 10% is there, but 10% is God's to give back to him. But guess what? The rest of that 90 is also God's. Yes. Uh, but we're managing it. Yes. And that's the that's the perfect segue from tithing was the 10 percent to now the 90 percent, which is still God's. And I think that that mindset helps me because I go, it's all like, oh, OK, this is God's. This is mine. No, it's all still God's. All God's. It's yeah. all for his glory. And he wants me to manage it. And I feel what it does for me that's helpful is it puts a bigger emphasis em- emphasis on how I treat it. Right. Right. Because I have to be wise. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, there's many parables. I was thinking about the parable of the 10 servants where they're allocated uh, or, or you, even the parable of the talents where they're allocated a talent or they're mm-hmm. allocated the silver. And what are you going to do with it? Right. 
and uh, how they manage it matters. Yeah, it was the master's goods, but right. he delivered it to his servants and said, do business till I come. Right. And and ultimately, isn't that what God did when Jesus, Jesus, exactly. before he ascended, said, hey, go and, uh, you know, build the kingdom, essentially, right. preach the gospel to all creation, yeah. baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Right. And and he says, I'm with you always, even in the age. God is with us, but we, we understand that Jesus ascended, and he essentially gave us his goods, the kingdom resource. Right. And said, do business till I come. I mm-hmm. want you to do kingdom business. And I think when we view what we have, that 90% left over, as a resource for kingdom business, it changes our mindset. Right. And when you're asking God, what do you want me to do with your finances? You know, it, there's there's no guilt when God says, hey, I want you to take care of your family. I want you to have a retirement. I want you to own a nice home yeah. in a safe neighborhood right. and, and uh, have your wish list. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those things, you yeah. know? And and sometimes people feel guilty about wanting a nice car or, you know, when they have like yeah. some recreational electric bike or I, I mentioned the golf clubs. Yeah. I mean, that could be any number of things, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever people are into, you know, if you're into crafting and you want this device that cuts things, but it's, you know, yeah. expensive and, and you're just going, man, I feel guilty about that. But I don't think God has any problem with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if we view it as, Lord, this can be a kingdom resource. So, yeah. yeah, you're having fun making crafts, doing birthday gifts and things like that. But also, hey, when uh, it comes for kids camp, I'm going to make the kids in my cabin yeah. this amazing thing. And now all of a sudden they're like, whoa, look at this bag that I got, right. you know, and uh, or they, they put a special cup with my name on it. How yeah. did they do that? And all of a sudden they're viewing camp and church yeah. and and church leadership as like so amazing, and they grow up serving the Lord because they had a fun time. God works all things together for good, right? right. And and, and uh, I was reminded of the scripture f- this morning that God gives us richly all things to enjoy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. And and I love the strategic use of words in the midst of talking about finances that and the dangers of it mm-hmm. and, and the desire for wealth and how people can get off. God says, "I, I want to give you richly," which yeah. is a buzzword, right? Yeah. Rich. Yeah. But God wants to give us richly all things. Not some things, all things yeah. to enjoy. Yep. And and enjoyment is pleasure, right? Enjoyment is something that that we're happy about. Enjoyment is something that is memorable and fun. And people feel guilty about that. Yeah. But God says, No, I want you to feel happy about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and then when it comes time for kingdom building, it, it, let's feel happy about that. You yeah. know, let's let's go for it. Because hey, haven't I blessed you richly? Yeah. I was just reading about one of the kings today. And it says that the king hired 100,000 men from Israel. And the prophet comes to the king and says, hey, why did you hire these yeah, guys? Uh, yeah. God God doesn't need them. They've forsaken the Lord. And so yeah. if they go with you, you're not going to have success. And he right. goes, what do I do with the silver I just gave them? Right. right. I paid them a lot of money. Yeah. And the prophet, it's so funny. The prophet's like, God can give you so much more. Yeah. And it's like, whoa. Right. You know, like, okay. And he lets them go and then then has a victory. Right. You know, so he, he lost the money, lost but the he money. recognized. And I think that's I mean, that's a huge that's a whole message right there, because yeah. you think about we think of, like, oh, if I do this then I'll lose out on this, I'll lose out on that. But isn't it worth obviously he's saying it's worth losing that because what you'll gain yeah. in return is, is so much more. And but it takes the trust that God will provide better. And I think that's where we miss it sometimes. Sure. Our trust that God can actually provide better. For sure, yeah, and and that's one of those things that, that is the the test that comes with need. Are we able to trust God for more? Are we right. able to trust God that He'll give us richly? Are we able to trust God that He can supply those things? That right. even if we're wronged, or even you know, I, I think about in some practical ways, like if you if you paid for a movie mm-hmm. at the theater and you went in there yeah. and it was dirty and you said I'm out and yeah. you went and they said sorry, you watched enough that we can't refund right. you. Right. It can't God give you the right. you know fifteen bucks or whatever a movie costs now? I watch yeah. everything at home nowadays. Yeah. Cause, <laughs> man, I'm like yeah. nope, you know. So, but um, but yeah, I mean, can't God give you that fifteen bucks back or whatever it cost yeah. and and whatever your time was? I mean, God can restore those things to us. But we have to trust that God's able. Uh, you know, even if we're wrong, even if someone steals from us or you know those things. I remember there was a, a charlatan mm-hmm. in the early years of this church that came through. Pastor Jim would tell the story, and one of our actually one of our staff members. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, was was talked into investing in this thing and invested his retirement, lost everything, mm-hmm. and yet God has taken care of that man. Mm-hmm. He still is in the church to this yeah. day. He's a yeah. man of God, and uh, and just doing really well. You right. know, family's blessed, right. um, taken care of. Uh, I, I remember, you know, I 
I uh, started driving Pastor Jim's well, you need to drive an executive car. So right. I, I went out and purchased a yeah. Lexus ES yeah. 350, you yeah, know, yeah. and um, and because it had the most leg room and, yeah. you know, I'm hosting guest speakers, things like that. And so I remember uh, this employee came to me, said, what, do you, what do you think about that car? I said, oh, I love it. It's a great car. It's a Toyota, essentially, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's reliable. This, and that. Said, I've been thinking about a car. I'm like, dude, really? You're going to get one of those? And he's like, yeah. And so, um, I mean, he bought a nicer one than I had. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa, you yeah, know, it's so yeah. cool that one of my employees has a, a yeah. better car than I do. You know, he got the newer model and right. all that. kind of, And it was just like, and he didn't need it, you mm -hmm. know, but, it, but, but it, again, God gave him richly and restored those things. Here's a man who took his whole retirement and sank it into this investment that went south. Mm -hmm. And yet at the end of his life, he's driving a better car than I am. Yeah. He's, he's doing well, still serving, still wonderful. Yeah. Now he's retired. And, and God's just taking care of the guy. God will take care of you no yeah. matter what happens to your life. Yeah. No. I, I, and I think that it's so indicative of God can do m m so, so much, much more, more for us than we can. Yeah. And, and that's what stewardship is, is actually trusting God with it to let go enough. And I, yeah. I can see that that can be the hard part. But I know we want to talk about some of the, there are practical things that we can do that kind of help us in trusting sure, God sure. Uh, because sometimes it feels probably more difficult to trust God when we feel like, Oh man, it's either this or eat, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. either be generous or pay this bill. Uh, and I think there are practical skills that can help us kind of maybe overcome some of those challenges yeah. so that we can approach stewardship with a little bit more, would it be ease or just a uh, grace in trusting God, right? Like I, I yeah, and so it's just it is things that we can do in the natural. Whoa, I'm messing all the mics up. That's right. um, things we can do in the natural. Uh, and I know you mentioned some of them. You touched them. I, I like you. You talked about the uh, image. But one specific thing you said that stood out was closing the circle. Yeah. Um, so maybe walk us through some of, of that. Pastor. Jim. I actually got that terminology from a book. Two Canadian guys wrote a book. I think it's called. Another Wealth. Canada reference. Another Remember Canada. C.A. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. Anyways. Go ahead. But uh, Wow. Um, yeah, no, two, two guys, uh, wrote a book. They, they were traveling ministers as well that would do seminars and things like that, but they wrote a book called, I think it's wealth, money and possessions or something okay. like that. Yeah. And they start with sparrow faith that, you know, if God can feed the sparrows, he'll feed you, you mm -hmm. know, and that's where if we can trust God as our supply and our provider and then tithe start there. Do you don't eat that seed? That's for, it's for sowing, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's God's first and then you steward the rest as managers of God's goods. Um, and it's a brilliant book, yeah. and, uh, and, and they do a great job of explaining that. And so they talk about closing the circle, and that's why I wanted to give that image of, here's your budget and this, these items on this, if we can close that circle, because basically what it's saying is how much is enough. Yeah. That, that also helps us to deal with that greed, right? Because in, in the world system, it's never enough. It's never, it's never going to be a nice enough, a nice enough home. It's mm -hmm. never going to be a nice enough car. It will never be enough goods. It'll never be enough shoes. It'll be, never be enough food and, and wealth. And there right. will always be something better, always something new, mm -hmm. you know. And, and the world system is designed that way. Cars, I think, have about a three- to four-year lifespan on a body style because yep. they know that if they can come out with a new car in three years, then the people who are doing three-year leases— yep. they're going to get the new one, right? Uh, the people that are doing, um, you know, a five-year— uh, purchase plan, then a there's a new model. Yeah, this is paid off. I was paying the payment. I can afford it. Why don't I just roll that over? And the dealership starts to send you the, the oh, letters. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> we would love to buy your car, and we're looking for used yeah, cars and yeah, this model yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So of course they are, yeah. but um, you know, there's there's all these incentives and that sort of a thing. Uh, and then you know, with electronics, how many new phones are always coming out? Mm -hmm. We're bombarded with these images of the newest, latest, greatest, and this one has this camera, and this one has these options, right. and this one has this new thing, and. So there's always that desire for more, and we have to close that circle and mm -hmm. say, hey, this is what's enough. Right. This is what's enough for me to live. And then outside of that, I mentioned this, and this was my own terminology, mm -hmm. when you close that circle, it opens up generosity, yeah. gifts, right. recreation, and the things that you want. Now, now, the guys in their book, they actually put recreation inside of that, and your wants. Right. You know, um, they put those things inside of that circle. And, and you can do it either way. Um, I think that, uh, you know, in many ways I've trusted God with my wants, even outside mm. of that circle. Right. Uh, my wife and I know our budget and we've, we put that together and we know what we need to live on. Yeah. And then we've had things like our children's education mm -hmm. within that circle. Right. You know, we put those things in there and we set those aside monthly so yeah. that we're not surprised. 
and we don't want our kids getting into debt or us getting into debt over their, especially higher education. Right, right. You know, that's a problem, and that's something that has weighed people down. I'm not trusting in, in the government for forgiveness, right. uh, you know, but I'm also eyes wide open knowing that um, if they're going to go to a higher education, yeah. then it needs to be paid for, right. and I'm not going to live outside of my means. And mm-hmm. so um, our kids have worked hard. Uh, my daughter got a scholarship that cut the tuition in half, right. and then we set aside monthly what we need for the rest. Yeah. And that's really helped us to provide for those things. We also had uh, a house that was in our care, yeah. and we were holding on to it. I thought we were going to hold on to it for retirement in the future, mm-hmm. but as we were praying, God spoke to us in that season, hey, mm-hmm. sell the house, and then you'll have what you need for uh, you know, this, this education yeah. for your kids. Yeah. And so we were able to pay for completely free and clear uh, the private education yeah. for one of our children and then to put towards the college and that sort of a thing for our daughter. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just been a good thing for us, but it was a resource in our hands that God said, Hey, this is what this is for. Right. 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 And so there's no guilt, you know, we didn't give all the money to the church. We didn't yeah. give it all the missions, but right. God said, it's okay to use it for yourself mm-hmm. because you're stewarding this yeah. good. And I've used, I brought this to your hand yeah. for this purpose. And that right. house was a blessing. I mean, to even some of our staff members lived there right. for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but, but now it's been a blessing to our family. Right. And, and we obviously tied off of the, the income that we, we did receive over mm-hmm. and above because yeah. we bought the house at a certain price, sold right. it for a greater price. Yeah. So there was a tithe, there was yeah. taxes, there yeah. was things that came out of that, but also a part of it was bread for food, right? We're, yeah. we're consuming that and using that for our family. So, you know, that's where closing the circle, uh, gives you the freedom yeah. to move within that space. Right. Well, I love, so you're saying in closing, it actually opens. And, and that, that was kind of the, the, yeah, that was my own terminology. If you close right. this circle, it will right. open up the world of generosity to yeah. you. Yeah. You know, um, well, cause like you said, everyone, most people want to think if I only had, I'd yeah. do this. Yeah. And someone said that to me, Oh, I'd love to be able to fund missions, like full missions. I was like, well, how many are people have you? I mean, we have a missions trip. How many have you given to 20 bucks? Yeah. It's like, oh, like it, it, it has to really start somewhere. Yeah. Right. It, it really does start somewhere like, oh, I want to give away cars. Well, like, have, have you paid anyone's payment? Right. Like maybe yeah. you're not going to give away a $10,000 car. So see, but have it. you blessed? Yeah. Like, have you blessed someone, you know, maybe a single mom on their car payment? This is it, it, and it's the but that opens. The door. And I think that becomes so contagious. Well, right, because you, yeah, it really is more blessed to give than to receive. Practically, let's jump off of giving away cars. Right. I've heard of people that have desired to give away cars, right. and um, one guy I heard about gave away nine cars in one year because he desired to give away right. cars. Right. Um, there was a missionary who ended up giving away, and I'm probably messing this up, but I, it was in in the hundreds, I yeah. think. Wow. You know, it was like either a hundred and something yeah. or over that, um, just because God blessed them mm-hmm. as they started to. Again, like you said, start small. Um, we heard those stories, yeah. and uh, Jessica and I, we endeavored in, in our college years when we were out in Oklahoma going to Bible college, um, we, we heard these stories, and mm-hmm. we got inspired. We'd yeah. like to give away a car. Yeah. Well, when we traveled home uh, for the summer in between our first two years, um, we left a car there in Tulsa, and there was a family of seven. Wow. They had a minivan, yeah. and that was it. And so they were driving kids to school. They were, and, and then the, the the parents both worked at the place where we worked at, and so they were driving together and trying to keep their hours together. But they didn't have a second vehicle, and so we were leaving the car, the one car, because we had two cars. Yeah. And so in in coming home, we drove my car home, but we left the other car, and we we left it with that family. We said, hey. Would you guys like to borrow this car for the summer? Yeah. Okay. Now we didn't give the car away. We right. we just let them borrow it, and they said, "Oh, that would be a huge blessing yeah. for us to have the in- independence to to use it." So they used it all summer, and then during the year when we came back, we said, "Hey, anytime you guys need a second vehicle, let us know." Right. You know. And so there were times, "Hey, can we borrow the car this week? We've yeah. got a and yeah, yes, right. Yeah. We'll make it work." Because Jessica and I worked at the same place, mm. and we had the same school schedule, and yeah. so. We had favor on the job. We had the same work schedule. And so it was great, you know? Yeah. So if they needed it for a week, yeah, here, take the car. Here's the yeah. keys, everything. Yeah. They're good. So at the end of the school year, now, mind you, that car is paid off free and clear, right. okay? And um, didn't have any air conditioning, you know, right. just a, a manual stick right. shift. And, and um, so we were driving home, and we had to drive my car home. And then we had a, a large moving van to drive our, our things home from the apartment that right. we lived in at the time. And so our thought was, is, hey, we don't have any car payments. We're going to buy a new car eventually, yeah. uh, but we don't want to drive this one back. Yeah. 
We, we don't have three people to drive it back. Why don't we do this? Let's take a step of faith. Let's give this car to this family, yeah. bless them, drive our car and the moving down home, yeah. and then we'll purchase a new car in California, and that way yeah. we're, we're clear of it. They're blessed. We're blessed. It's easier all the way around. And so I, I still remember going in, and we were so excited, going into the store where we worked yeah. with the keys and the pink slip, mm-hmm. and uh, we had it all signed and ready to go. You know, and we just walked up to them and it was at the front of the store too. And so we were right out in front of all these cash registers and people coming in and out and, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. The whole management team's up there in the front desk and everything. And I remember we said, hey, we're leaving. We wanted to say goodbye. And in saying goodbye, we wanted to give you a gift. Yeah. Here's the keys to the car. And I mean, their eyes welled up with tears. Uh, the the wife, she shouted and it echoed through the store. Praise God! Yeah. <laughs> like just bit and and just they gave us hugs and yeah. it was just so fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, years later, I was able to give another car away to uh, a single dad. Yeah, his wife died. He's actually a widower. Mm. Uh, didn't have transportation, and I was uh, you know thinking about what I was going to do with my car before I bought right. the Lexus. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and and so um, I just remember I had this car for a decade. Yeah, ten years. Yeah. And um, and I was getting ready to buy my new car. And rather than take the car in for a trade-in, mm-hmm. I ended up spending more. But I was able to bless someone with that other car. you know. Right. And it's just simple things like that. That rather than have the trade-in value, yeah. A, I'll pay a little bit more on the payment every month. Right. Uh, you know, and, and Or I'll save up. Again, if you have a closed circle, you yeah. can save up money for a down. Yeah. And then use the resource that you have in your hand to bless someone else. Right. And I think that's where generosity starts to open up is that, hey, my close circle allows me right. these things to have savings, right. to do other things, and to be generous. Well, you know, what else I realized in in that story is, you know, there's the need aspect, the, the greed aspect that if we're not careful, like see things like that open up when we say, you know what, I know I could afford a payment. But I'm going to keep this car. Yeah. Reason being is because you're more likely probably to give away a car than to save up ten, fifteen thousand dollars and buy someone a new. Like you're, you're yeah. going to probably give away a car True. before you go buy them a car. True. But what that that required was you having a paid off car. Yes. <laughs> but if we're only always, always re- trading in for the next, for the next, latest, always trading in for the next, new keeping model. our next, then we don't really. It never becomes an asset that's ours to be able to give. Right. And, uh, you know, if, for example, uh, I have a car I've been driving. It's going to be it's nine years old now. In my mind, uh, I'll keep it for three more years because my son will turn 16 and I'll be his car. There you go. But God's been. I don't know if it's God or just I've been getting this thought lately, like. Well, I think it's been God like, right, would you be willing to give this car away? Now, in my mind, God, I'm, I'm saving this for Andrew. Yeah, I'm saving this. And that's a good stewardship, right? Sure. I'll, I, I could I go buy another car, sure. I, but but I want to be able to do this. I'd ra- again, I'd rather do this than have to come up with money when he has when he's of age to be able to buy a car. Or can I give it away now if God were to say? And then could I trust God that, like you're saying, like the the, the story of the king, when he needs a car, God will provide a car. God, God will give you a car. I don't know. So or I, money I, for I'm, a I'm car. not saying I'm giving it away yet, but I feel like that's been prompting in my heart. Wow. Like, oh. So, listeners, if you're needing a car, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Right. I'm, like, all of a sudden, they're like, hey, don't come up there. Start coming up to me, door. like, hey, man, I really could oh, use it. Oh, man. Car. Would you pray for me, Pastor? I need a car. I need but a car. But I realize, like, so again, and that, that's not a boast as much as just like continuing with the idea of if I don't just go get the latest, greatest. Because I can't afford it. And we yeah. could say, but God wants me to have nice things. And absolutely he, he does. does. But do I, I mean, the, <laughs> but it's also a nice thing to give. Who's to say that if, I'm not saying right. this is what God is going to yeah. do or anything like that. I'm not prophesying. But at the same time, who's to say that if you gave that car away, right. that God didn't give you a better car for Andrew? Right. right. I mean, th- yeah. it's just the reality of who God is yeah. and what you sow, you'll reap. Right. And you never reap. Yeah. In lower fashion, right? right? You reap right. greater than what you've sown, right? Yeah. Because that's the that's the multiplication principle that when we put seed into the ground, mm-hmm. it returns to us in greater measure. Yeah, and, and that's where I think people get off on this thing that like we 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 look at our seed, and like you're saying, and, and we have to deal with greed, right? Like, and if we close that circle and say this is enough, that I'm content, right? Uh, that that God is my provider mm-hmm. and He'll supply for my need. Then when it comes to resource and God says I need this for kingdom purposes, yeah. 
you know, there's a single mom or a single dad or someone who needs a car, or a family of seven, yeah. then we've got a resource that we can say, okay, God, then here it is. Yeah. And God, by the way, you know my need. Mm-hmm. I need a car for right. later yeah. for my son, you know, or, or whatever the need is for the future. And God says, okay, I'll provide for that. But what you've sown, you're going to reap. Yeah. And in greater measure. Yeah. You know? Well, the, I feel like we can spiritualize our greed sometimes. For sure. Right? Because it's like, oh, God, you said, and I'm trusting you. And we think that the answer is really what we did in our own. Mm-hmm. And so uh, maybe help us unpack getting over, like, wait, because actually me living open is is more spiritual than thinking like, oh, well, God gave me this. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. generous aspect of yeah. it. Well, I, I think about, you know, someone who has been in, involved in that greed, you mm-hmm. know, and they've extended themselves. You know, we, we didn't get time to unpack this a lot in the message, but, you know, use of credit mm-hmm. and debt and yes. things like that. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a financial obligation, right? Uh, you know, even the children of Israel were, were told to lend. Um, and and it, it talks about, uh, you know, what, what that would look like and forgiveness and, of debts and things like that. Um, God had an amazing system, mm-hmm. you know, every seven years and every 50 years. And I mean, there was just, there, there were systems that God put in there to make sure that his people were taken care of and were, were prosperous and were blessed. But the, the system of lending even, you know, lending money, uh, he didn't say to exact usury, you know, that, that where it was exorbitant interest and things like that. Um, you know, they, they were commanded to lend to each other. And then Jesus even said to lend without expectation of return, you yeah. know. And so there are things that, that I, I don't think we understand and, and operate in fully. But when it comes to, um, you know, uh, purchasing a home, and obviously, you know, there are going to be some people who have the ability to save up and, mm-hmm. and pay for a house free and clear. You yeah. know, I had a friend who, who was doing that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was because, but he was living in a trailer. Yeah. At the time, you know, with his family. Right. I don't know how he did that because yeah, uh, yeah. that would drive me crazy. <laughs> but at the same time, he was doing that, um, you know, and and uh, and was saving up cash yeah. to be able to purchase a home. And um, and, you know, you can absolutely do that. But there's nothing wrong with having a mortgage, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and and paying for it as long as, again, it's in your financial means and within that close circle. Yeah. Same thing with purchasing a car and having a five year loan or something like that on there. Pay your bills. Yeah. If you can, you know, and, and, and if you can't, then don't purchase the new car or whatever you need to do, you know, and figure that out, you know, um, and buy an e-bike or take public transportation yeah. or whatever you need to do while you save up and while you prosper and grow into that place and believe God for what's what's ahead. But there are people that extend themselves where they have the car payment that they can't afford. They have the house payment. They have the, uh, you know, um, they, they've, they've purchased the phone on credit. Mm-hmm. They've purchased clothing on credit. They, they're always going out. We talked about that addiction to shopping. And, and I, I believe that as people are looking at that and then they, they look at this overwhelming debt, when it comes to stewardship and they start to hear about the tithe, they get overwhelmed. I can't afford to live with what I have because I'm weighed down by debt. And I can't, like you said, yeah. it's either... It's either tithe or eat. Right. Well, I have to eat. Right. You know, which says, well, I don't have to tithe. Right. Essentially. Yeah. But that's God's. Yeah. And so give that to God, and then God will provide. Again, back to sparrow faith. He feeds the sparrows. He can feed you. You. Yeah. God knows you have to eat. Right. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bride. God will take care. He'll. He can command someone to bring groceries to right. your door. And we've heard, those are all testimonies. These I've are all things it. we've heard. I've heard, I've been the one to deliver the right. groceries. These you know what I mean? All, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, God has commanded me to give people money, right. you know? And right. it's like, okay, here, here it is. Hey, right. I don't know why, but God's just asking me to give this to you, brother, you right. know? And people have wept mm-hmm. because, wow, I, I, I didn't have any money and That's I didn't know how we're going to buy groceries, but thank you. You know, yeah. like, um, and, and doing it anonymously, anonymously, I love watching people deliver the envelope or whatever it is. And people yeah. open their eyes, get big and they start crying. And it's just like amazing, you know, but, but God will take care of that. And, and so that's where we have to take care of the stewardship aspect. Right. And so, you know, um, we've had some, some people go through Dave Ramsey's materials, things right. like that, yeah. uh, financial peace university. Those are all solid things, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, uh, you know, Dave Ramsey's extreme in some areas, yeah, you know, yeah. and and I love it. Yeah. Um, and, and I know sometimes people kick against some of those things because of of his strong stances on those things, you know. Um, however, the basic principles that he lays out, uh, man, I just I, I absolutely agree with. 
Um, things like snowballing your credit. You yeah. know, if you've got a high interest credit card, yeah. pay that one off first yeah. and then take what you were paying that off on and then take it to your next level of right. interest and the next one and snowball that into payments. And eventually yeah. you'll be paying that all of your, your credit off within years. And then once you don't have any debt payments, pay yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yep. start putting that into your retirement and your mm-hmm. savings and, yeah. and, you know, start paying yourself and, and start putting it aside for the purchases that you need in the future, you know, and, and for the car for your son or for, you know, those other things, because if you're not paying it all on the credit, you can now pay yourself yeah. and even gain interest on that money, you know, put it into investments or different things that will make you more money. And that's just wisdom, right? That's st- smart stewardship. Well, you know, and you bring a, an important point, Pastor Dan, I'm wondering, maybe, maybe we can close with this thought or, uh, or the idea that I'm realizing people can be, th- it can be riddling, right? For yeah. people, because all of a sudden, you know, like you mentioned, you mentioned different things that people get into, student loans, cars, you know, people make mistakes. Sure. Right? And it's easy to say, hey, avoid these mistakes. But there are people listening, watching on the other side of these mistakes. And I know there's, there was a season uh, when Angeline was in between jobs. Uh, all, all of a sudden, we found our credit card balance going up. And yeah. I remember the, and now I look back at the number and it, didn't, it doesn't really feel a very big looking back but i remember the daunting weight that it was yeah. and so i can imagine families people listening watching that feel that and like oh, okay it's great moving forward but there are people in serious amounts and and how can you lead us pastor dan just through the thought of okay yeah, i know the scripture trust god i know like but wh- where do i start where do i where do i take this because this is just yeah, you know, they're going to come after me. They're going to do this. Uh, like the walls are closing in. Sure. Yeah, I think um, you know it's it's very strategic how God led me to preach this series. And if you go back to the beginning, part number one, God is our source. So if you understand that principle, the weight, the worry, mm, the good. fear, it will lift off of you. It, and and if you're if you're dealing with this right now, I'd include uh, I would encourage you, listener or watcher to just take a moment, close your eyes, lift your hands, and just say, God, you're my source. And just allow that weight and that pressure to be lifted off. The Bible says to cast your cares on the Lord. Uh, You know, uh, literally in the book of Proverbs, when it talks about this, it talks about rolling off like a camel with a burden on its back that's been walking through the desert, that's been carrying a load to, to kneel down, and to roll on its side and allow that weight to be just taken off. Like it just, just if there's a weight on your back, just God cast it on you. Mm-hmm. Let it roll off my back onto your back. God's shoulders are bigger than yours and he can carry the weight, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he provides for all of this planet, every person on the planet, every, every animal on the planet. He can provide for you. So start there. Second thing, though, is with your finances, start with the tithe, mm-hmm. right? We tithe 10% and then we steward the rest. Right. If you start where God starts, yeah, you're going to end where God ends. Come on, that's good. And that's I think so that's where, with stewardship especially, this, the, the beginning of stewardship is 10%. The end of stewardship is closing that circle and being generous, mm-hmm. right? And, and it may take time. I think this is the thing that, that we don't get to maybe unpack in the message, mm-hmm. is that it's going to take time. Right. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take strategies that yeah. the Holy Spirit gives you. It'll take things like going to the Be Money Smart class mm-hmm. in August or reading Dave Ramsey's book or going yeah. through Financial Peace University, any of those things um, you know, that, that you can get a hold of. And I would encourage you to do as much as you can, get as much information as you can, research it. Uh, there's some, uh, some wonderful, godly, practical believers that have these types of tools, like I mentioned. Um, you know, there's some great books that we've, we've leaned on. Chris Valentin has a mm-hmm. book yeah. um, on it. Uh, you know, there's another one. Oh, man, I'll... Uh, I'm, drawing a blank right now. There's some other yeah. great resources out there. Just, just search, you know, Christian finance and you'll yeah. probably find a bunch of stuff right. that's out there, um, you know, and, and, and look for recommendations, but also find somebody that's in the faith. That's, that's wise, like a Barbara and Dennis or mm-hmm. somebody who's been there to sit down and just open, here's my budget, you know, yeah. and don't be ashamed. Right. Uh, this is the thing we've all dealt with things. I, my first house, when I bought it, I bought it zero down interest only. Yeah. And and we were in a world of hurt when the bottom fell out in two thousand eight, right. you know. Right. And uh, and I had to to repent and say, God, that was very naive and very foolish of me mm-hmm. to get into a loan like that, you right. know. 
And, and so again, nothing wrong with getting a loan, but when you're not actually paying down principal and when you're, you're outside of your means, yeah. that sort of thing, that's where we run into problems. And so there's a wisdom of God. And so it's going to take time. I had to pray for two years through the process of doing a, a, a modification on that loan right. Right. And, and the payment went up. It didn't go down, yeah. you know, in the midst of all the economic uncertainty. And so we had to not go on big vacations during that. I mean, I think Pastor Jim... You know, when we do the family vacation, yeah. he'd rent a house. We were so thankful because, man, I, I can afford the gas up to the place yeah. where we're going. And then we, we'll have the vacation. We'll just purchase food. But we weren't going anywhere. You know, we weren't doing anything on our own. If they didn't pay for the vacation, we weren't going on vacation. Yeah. You know, but I'm grateful that the Lord still provided right. through my father-in-law at the time, you know. Yeah. And and, uh, and then we were able to, to pay that home down and get into a better financial position and properly steward what God had put into our yeah. in our hearts. And that's where just because you tithe, the problems don't go away. And that's it's good. gonna take time. Debt is it. gonna take time. It may take you years to get out of debt. Yeah. But it's worth the journey because after those years of getting out of debt, guess guess what? You're gonna have more resource in your hand to be generous and right. do the things that I you want to do. Yeah. By the way, I'm gonna tell a joke this weekend about that point. Okay. So be looking for the joke. All right. It's a funny one. Pastor Dan, I've enjoyed the conversation. Any any last thoughts on that? I mean, I think this this I'm having such a great time learning so much each and I, and I've read some of these books. I've yeah. listened to podcasts and heard sermons about fine but it's just it, is, it seems like every week there's more and more and it, it's just been a really it's been a joy and I, I I'm growing. Like I said, maybe yeah. these prompts to give away my I'm not going to come to church anymore. I'm going to give, give away my card. No, <laughs> <laughs> pastor, uh, but, pray, you know, pray for God, me, Pastor. God will <laughs> Pray for but, me. It, it, it's going to be good. So, but any any closing thoughts? You know, I think um, just as I'm thinking about that question, the words of Jesus, you know, to to give, to share, to lend with nothing, hoping nothing in return. You know, so um, everyone has something in their hand, and even for those of you that are struggling financially, you know, if you're making a sandwich, make two. That's good. And give one to someone. That's good. Uh, you know, if you're making a pot of st- soup, put a put a, a serving in a, in a little side thing you know if you've got a fruit tree in your backyard you get a bumper crop or even if you get a small crop set set aside some to give away to someone you know um because even on the side of the freeway when someone's asking for money if you can give them an apple if you can uh share with someone mm-hmm. you know um they they may not have the right intentions they may not be pure in their motive of, of asking um however the bible says that god sends rain on the just and the unjust mm-hmm. on the even on the evil and the unthankful and so when we bless others and when we start to share, God will increase those things that are in our hands because whatever you sow, you'll reap. And God will take care of you and just be encouraged. Uh, you know, like I said, start with God is my source. Start tithing, stewarding the rest. And then we'll get to what we're going to get yes, to this weekend, I'm generosity. Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm so excited yeah, about that too. this weekend. Because it feels like so much connects. It's like it's all connecting so it, much. It is, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a process. I mean, it's a process of thought, but it's also a process of faith right. that when we culminate in generosity, oh, my goodness, it gets fun. Yep, very it much really so. gets – I mean, there's a joy. Like we mentioned some of those stories of, of being the vessel that God uses to bless mm-hmm. someone. Yeah. When you hear them praise God and thank God like that, yeah. I mean, I tell you, anytime I, I think about those things, I just get happy, mm-hmm. you know? Maybe someday we'll give away houses. Right. Hey, come on. Wow. That's awesome. Properties. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Praise the Lord. Let's let's dream. Let's yeah. dream. It'd be awesome. Yeah. We can do it. What, what can God do through you? Amen. That's good. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Again, like, share, subscribe. It all helps us to get the word out. If it blesses you. Let us know. And then I think we're going to try to do that question and answer one. So uh, send your questions in. Love you guys.